Hey, I'm Lynn Langett. I'm Lou Allen Falvo. And here we are on this beautiful Southern California day. We're wearing our sunglasses, even though we're programming inside. And we've been doing some experimenting around with our kids' stuff. So we're going to show today Small Basic, obviously kids' language and editor we've been using for a while. And we're going to contrast that to our experiments using Java and Eclipse, which is the full, obviously, adult editor and language. And it's kind of surprising we found where an adult language and a kid's language both are similar and where they're different. Yep, and to do that, we're going to just run our recipe. Um, so let's get started. Well, we're going to start in Small Basic. This yep. is the editor right out of the box. The nice thing is it has this ability to import. And this is importing our recipe from the web where we published it. So we just do a translation here um, into uh, Show the Tortoise. Is, it makes it into Tortoise. And you can see the IntelliSense nicely pops up in this nice rounded bubble that we really love. And this makes it super easy for kids to basically guess. Um, so we, we tell them it's a multiple choice environment to get started. There's no building, there's no, there's just click the run button and you can get the immediate feedback. Let's contrast that with Java. So here we are in Java. Now we don't have the import, so we are actually starting them with the file mm -hmm. in the editor and all the workspace set up and everything. Okay, so on the Java side, you're going to have to put the line in and then you're going to have to go for the tortoise object but it's not gonna pop up. You're gonna have to do control space to get the list. Notice that the documentation though, the Java doc is extendable and we can even put a picture in there. So you just, you know, complete that, put a dot, and then, you know, you get your normal pick list. Um, so not the wheel again, but you do get your pick list and then you get editor hints. So you can see over there, this helps the kids to have the syntax be correct. There isn't a nice easy way to do the play here either. So control F11 is what we'll teach them. Yeah, so it's not as intuitive. But it is easier to delete the line as it's control D for delete. Rather than control L. For line. Yeah. All right. Well, that went pretty smoothly between the two. Let's go to our next one. So this is pretty straightforward. Just going to, you know, complete again. Now, one thing over on Small Basic, the documentation is really colorful extendable. We've put in all these examples that the kids when they're getting started can just copy and paste. But they have to go straight to the documentation at this time. There's nothing sort of guiding them to how to use move. If we contrast that with Eclipse, again control space dot you get your list. It actually puts in that you need the length and pixels to move. Yeah. So it gives them a little bit more guidance with, so this next one is pretty much the same turn. Same situation where you have to complete in the pieces that are missing. Yep. Now in case you're using small ba basic, um, you're new to it, this tortoise is something that we actually wrote in extensions for small basic in C sharp. It's a project on CodeFlex, it's called small basic fun. So we basically took this extensions and we created the base object in Java and then we basically replicated um, the functionality of our extensions. And again, I really like the way Eclipse just sort of says, hey, you have a parameter here, here's the name of it. Yeah. And then you can actually clean up a couple of those lines too. So line 13. It's a, in our teaching, as soon as the kids get the English into the uh, appropriate destination language, we have them remove the line of English. This one's going to give us quite a bunch of difference. Here we have tortoise. Again, you have to search through. Now, the kids can search in both of them to get the set pin color. In both cases, you're going to need help from your example, which I like the way Small Basic puts this example right on the bottom. And when, our, when we teach, we encourage the kids to uh, cut and paste on the examples. And we purposely made the examples different than the recipe, so they have to actually read it. And there you get your blue line. If we compare that to Java, still a thing. However, if I was to start jumping to it, notice I get a filtered list, which is something you don't get in Small Basic. Yeah, it's you know, the more full tool set that you get in an adult editor. Now, the other thing is, disappointing here is that although your Java doc is up, it does not take you to the place you were just at. You have to click on it to get back to it. Then you can copy again from here. 
And the other thing that's really nice is notice this doesn't compile right now, but if the kids go and run it, it will actually compile and work. And that's because Eclipse is doing import statements on save. So it's actually fixing the problem so you don't have to explain them to the kids. Mm -hmm. Likewise, it's also nice that the colors can get split up. You can do sub classes in Java that you can't do here. So I can do blues. And then of course, it's also nice that as you go through, we can actually show the color of the color just a little added advantage from having better documentation. Yep. Just makes it more fun for the kids. So now we're on our for loop. Now this always gives the kids lots of trouble because you know they're brand new to it. So on small basic we do have, you know, the example, which is good. When you autocomplete, all you get is the word for. You have to go to the example itself to copy this part in. That should be a for. And if you do it wrong, the error is useful. But it doesn't highlight where it is in the code that the problem is. If we contrast that the way it works in Java, now here, we're using a custom template of our own, but Eclipse allows us to do that. Pretty easily, yeah. And we just made a template that was more intuitive for the kids. The stop is in red, which tells them they need to change it. And the piece of code that they want to move in, we use the editor and the Alt-Up key to move that so yeah. it's inside. And notice that that's nicely formatted, so it shows a little more intuitively how this works. Now, if we contrast that to small basic, this is not nicely formatted. Now, you can have them format the program, but the kids don't know to do that yet because they don't have yet to appreciate the value of nicely formatted code. Mm -hmm. When Eclipse, you can't not format the code. Yeah. Just to show an example of that, even if I was to save that, the moment that I run it, it reformats. Oh, we got one last line. Again, it's really nice that the documentation comes up right away for us here. But we don't see the parameter unless we look at the documentation, which we've seen kind of uh, over and over during yeah. this. So there's our square. Contrast that to Java. Now, the documentation does come here if you're patient enough for it, but almost nobody is. It will tell you that it wants a speed, but you then have to click out of here to figure out what the valid speeds are. Yeah, a little clunky, but at least it tells you it wants a speed. So that's kind of what we do in the core recipe. You know, um, what's interesting is we're going to show just one or two things from the second part of how we teach, which is called variation. And what we're doing here is we're teaching uh, refactoring. So uh, this becomes really, really interesting, the differences in the editor. So the first is, instead of 90, let's do the actual math, which is a quarter of a circle. Mm -hmm. Now, in Java, this isn't a problem, but if you're doing more odd numbers, then you'll need a 360 divided by zero, mm -hmm. or point zero. Yeah. Because you have to deal with integers and doubles. You don't have that problem in small basic. Simpler. The numbers are numbers. Right. Where we want to take the number and refactor it out. Here, we need to say size equals four, and find the other two pieces. Yeah, there's no real e uh, editor support for this. And while this gets you through the mechanics more, it kind of loses the big picture. If you contrast that to Eclipse, here we highlight the four. And then you right click, yep. Extract a local variable called sides. And you can see that's occurring here 
and here. And the idea is easier, although the mechanics are a little more obscure. Yeah. Either way, both of these produce exactly the same results at this part. Mm -hmm. Finally, we want to talk about our last step of the quiz. Now we have the quiz here in Java. You can see failing, haven't done anything yet. Now one of the things, if you haven't seen our course show before, that's kind of unique to us is we have actual quizzes in the editor in the language, not paper quizzes. And normally after each set of lessons or lesson, the kids do the quiz to validate what they've learned. And it's, it's very unique to what we do and um, it helps the kids to have practice and understand what they've learned. Now we're going to do these side by side so you can see the end result. Cool. So as you can see, as we're going through both of the quizzes, it's about the same, both in Small Basic and Java. The quizzes were the same, but going through the recipe was different. Yeah, and harder still in Java. Definitely, the, definitely the setup is much harder because uh, you don't just download the editor, get the extensions in, open, do your first line, and run it um, yeah. by pushing the blue button. It's more complicated there. But on the same hand, there's stuff in the Eclipse editor that I really like, like the refactoring. I love it. Yeah, like the the um, parameter information, the um, you know the red squigglies. So it's you know there's advantages and disadvantages to to each side really. But more than anything, I'm surprised on how similar the teaching experience is, in an, a language and an editor that are professional and the kids can go on and use for the rest of their lives versus a language and an editor that are only meant for teaching. Yeah, and we're going to be exploring more, so look for our more information at our site, which is teachingkidsprogramming.org.